This section focuses on vectors. The fact that vectors of a constant length have a derivative which is orthogonal to itself. Notationally, that means if you take a function, a vector valued function, and the length of every single one of those vectors is a constant, then the function and its derivative are orthogonal, meaning the dot product is zero. As a picture, just to help see what's happening, if you have a vector of length 3, and that vector is changing, but it always has length 3, well then if I want to find how the vector is changing, it's going from that direction to that direction, which means that the derivative happens to be orthogonal to the vector. And so the derivative of that vector valued function happens to be orthogonal to the vector itself. That's a picture which essentially explains why this fact is true. We're actually going to spend some time proving it. And knowing this proof is actually something I'm going to expect of you. If the vector has constant length, then I know the length is constant. Square both sides. If I square both sides, I end up with v squared equals c squared. Now recall that the dot product is really the same thing as the magnitude squared. The dot product gives length. So I can change this magnitude into a dot product. Now that takes the absolute values and gets rid of them and just gives me a dot product, but now I need to somehow get that derivative in there. So we're now going to differentiate both sides. Something to note about the dot product is it's called the dot product because the product rule for derivatives applies. So I can take the first times the derivative of the second plus the derivative of the first times the second. And that's the derivative of the left hand side. Now the derivative of a constant is zero. Now note that with the dot product you can actually reverse the order in which you compute things. It doesn't matter which order you do things in. So I can rearrange this and write it as v dot v prime. And then those add together to give me 2 v dot v prime, which means v dot v prime after I divide by 2 is 0. And that completes the proof.